Hey, I'm Terry Savelle Foley, your cheerleader of dreams. I want to talk to you today about something they teach in business to achieve your dreams, but it's also found in God's Word. In fact, my mom, Carolyn Savelle, said that every prayer she has ever prayed, when she added this, her prayers were answered. Every prayer! <laughs> what is it? It's desire. Not just any desire, an intense burning desire. So I shared this message at my Icing Women's event and I had a little acronym for desire. I want to take you into that conference, but first you need to know what the DES stands for when you're believing for a dream. So the D is decide to trust God's timing. See, with God, there's always a right time. So anything other than the right time is the wrong time. The E stands for encourage yourself. When you're waiting for a dream and it seems like it's never going to happen, you have to become your own best cheerleader. And the S is see your dream in clear detail. Did you know that your dream could be delayed because it's unclear? God said write the vision, make it plain. Now let's get the other three steps and I'll be right back. And then the I is to instantly believe you receive when you pray. Instantly believe you receive when you pray. You've probably heard that phrase that doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will, right? Doubt will poison your dreams and stop you from achieving them. But faith does the opposite. It empowers you to achieve your most impossible dream. I want y'all to look at Ephesians 3.20. This is from the, the Passion Translation, which I love this version of the Bible. Ephesians 3.20, listen to this translation. It says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. Don't you love that? But did you see the first two words in that scripture? Never doubt. You know, I, I think I noticed, is April Osteen here? <gasps> you are! I was like, is that April? The lights are so big. I love you, April. So April Osteen, this is Joel Osteen's sister. And April, woo woo, April! <laughs> I was listening to Victoria the other day, and she was talking about how people drink things, they, you know, drink um, things to detox their body and just talk, you know, release all the toxins from their body. And I was thinking about that, how let's just pretend that this is your mind and it's full of doubt, okay? Can y'all see this real good? When you consume the Word of God, it is detoxing your mind. Every time you push play and you hear God's Word, you are detoxing your mind. You're detoxing it from fear, from doubt, from hopelessness, from insecurity. I was hoping so bad this would work. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> what a relief. Okay. But every time you hear the Word of God, all of that fear, that doubt, that hopelessness, that discouragement, negativity, it's being detoxed from your mind. So think about it. Just tonight, by the fact that you're here or you're watching this, fear and doubt and hopelessness, they're being detoxed from you. And that's what it's going to take. In fact, I heard Jesse Duplantis say, people ask him all the time, how have you achieved so many impossible dreams? And you know what he said? I never learned to doubt. I just never learned to doubt. So listen to this scripture, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Most of you have probably heard this before. But it says, what things soever you desire, that's our word tonight, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So no matter what it is that you desire, you're believing God for a husband, you're believing God to pay off your debts, to get a promotion, to get a publisher, to get an office, to get a house, no matter what you're believing for, God is saying, what things soever you desire, when you pray, you're supposed to believe you have them. Not when you see them, but when you pray, right? So the reason I pointed out April a while ago is because I wanted to tell this story about your beautiful mom, Miss Dodie Osteen, how she was, you know, diagnosed with terminal cancer. And April, I don't remember if she was given three weeks or three months. Three weeks to live. Okay, so she's diagnosed with this terminal cancer, three weeks to live. And I was listening to your brother tell the story of how when she came home from the hospital and was given that report, that she laid in her floor, April could tell this way better than me, but she laid in her floor and she asked the Lord to heal her body according to 
you know, 1 Peter 2, 24, and I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And she wrote down December 11th, 1981. And she believed the moment she wrote that date down that healing entered her body. And she did exactly what I'm teaching you tonight. She decided to trust God's timing. She didn't look any different. She didn't feel any different. But she believed on December 11th when she asked God to heal her body, healing entered her body no matter what it looked like. E, encourage herself. She told me personally that she never leaves her house without reading healing scriptures. She said most people don't leave their house without taking vitamins. I won't leave my house without reading my healing scriptures. She said those are my vitamins. And then the S, see your dream in clear detail. She said she got pictures of herself before she was diagnosed with the cancer. When she was healthy and full of energy, she said she covered her bathroom mirror with those pictures. She put them on the refrigerator door. She put them in the picture frames all over the house. What was she doing? She was surrounding herself with what could be, not what was. That's vision, isn't it? And then the I stands for instantly believe you receive when you pray. I heard Joel say that after December 11th, 1981, when she asked God to heal her body, they never again heard her beg God to live again. They never heard her say, God, please heal my body. No, she believed on December 11th, healing entered her body. So from then on, all y'all heard her say was, thank you, Jesus, for healing my body. Thank you, Jesus, I'm healed of cancer. Now that takes faith, doesn't it? But do you know, I think it's what, like 42 years later, she's still going strong. I got to see her in New York. <laughs> I mean, what a testimony, though, of instantly believing you receive when you pray. You know, there's a scripture that actually says, I believe, therefore I speak. Well, do you know the most powerful thing that you could speak to show God you really believe these impossible dreams? The most powerful thing you can say is thank you, Jesus, before it ever happens. When you write your dreams and goals and then, and it looks like it's never going to happen, but you just start going, thank you, Jesus, you're working behind the scenes. Thank you, Jesus, you see down the road something I can't see. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know I have my breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus, even though your marriage looks worse than it ever did, thank you, Jesus, that you're restoring this marriage. You're working behind the scenes. That is the biggest expression of your faith. In fact, my dad said the Lord told him one time, the depth of your praise determines the magnitude of your breakthrough. The depth of your praise determines the magnitude of your breakthrough. So when you start praising God before it ever happens, that is the highest expression of faith, isn't it? Can we do it? Okay. So the R in desire, it stands for to release the past. Release the past. You know, this is a tough one, but there's a scripture in Luke, and it says, remember Lot's wife. Now, that story happened over in Genesis. Remember, God was going to deliver Lot and his family from destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, but he told Lot and his family, he said, I'll, I won't destroy you, but he gave them one command. Three words. He said, don't look back. And you remember the story. Lot's wife was running out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and she turned back, and she was turned into a pillar of salt, right? Well, that story gives the implication that she cared more about her past than she did her future. And she was destroyed by looking back. And the same is true for us. You will be destroyed if you keep looking back. Because everything God has for you, it's ahead of you. It's not behind you, right? But the main thing that I'm talking about when I say to release the past is to release all unforgiveness in your heart. Now, I know this isn't easy, but you know that scripture we just read in Mark 11:24. 24, it said you got to believe you receive when you pray. But do you know the very next verse, Mark 11:25? 25, it starts out with and. And is a conjunction, right? That means God's not finished talking. Keep reading. There's another key to success coming. And this is what it says. Listen to this from the Passion Translation. It says, and whenever you stand praying, if you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, release him and forgive him so your Father in heaven will also release you and forgive you of your faults. Do you all know that this is really serious to God? You know, we're talking about why your dreams could be delayed. Maybe you've almost given up on them. 
this could be a massive reason why your dream hasn't come to pass because of unforgiveness, because of holding on to something from the past that deeply hurt you. And you may have every right in the world to be hurt. In fact, you know, my sister and I tell this story because it impacted us both so much. But my dad told us a story about one of his partners years ago who um, the wife was in the hospital dying of cancer. And the husband called my dad and said, would you fly up here and pray over my wife? They've given her a horrible report that she's going to die of cancer. So dad felt like he really was supposed to go there. So he flew up there. And before he went in the hospital, he asked the Lord, he said, God, is there anything you want me to say to this woman? And the Lord told my dad, tell her if she will forgive her husband, I'll heal her of cancer and she'll walk out of this hospital. So my dad walked in that hospital room, not knowing what was going on. And he just leaned down and he told her, he said, the Lord told me that if you will forgive your husband, you will be healed of this cancer and you will walk out of here. Well, apparently her husband had cheated on her years ago. And she looked at my dad, pointed to her husband and said, I will never forgive him. Wasn't long after she died of cancer. Y'all, this is serious to God. He's saying, if you can't forgive, I can't forgive you. Well, another story was a friend of ours, um, she was believing God for children, and she was trying every, almost everything to get pregnant and just believing and praying and fasting and sowing seed and doing everything she knew to get pregnant, and she never could get pregnant. And finally, a friend of hers who knew about her life in prayer, the Lord told her, go tell her, if she will forgive her mom, she'll get pregnant. So she went to this girl, and she said, I just feel like the Lord told me that you've got to release these hurt feelings, this resentment in your heart towards your mom, and you're going to get pregnant. Now, her mom did one of the most horrible things I have ever heard in my life that a mom could ever do. She had every right to be hurt. But y'all remember how Joyce Meyer said after her father sexually abused her for, what, 15, 16 years? The Lord told Joyce Meyer, you've got to forgive him. And he told her, he said, Joyce, you can be pitiful or you can be powerful, but you're not going to be both. Here's what I want you to know about forgiveness. Forgiveness does not make that person right. It makes you free. Think about that. Forgiveness does not make that person right. It makes you free. Well, this friend of ours, she chose by faith to forgive her mom. And she said, I choose by faith to forgive my mom, and I'm never going to bring it up again. She's now had six beautiful children. Isn't that amazing? And, you know, it's, a, it's interesting because I wasn't even going to bring this point up, and the Lord gave me this point. As I was praying about this message, why are dreams delayed? Why do we almost give up on dreams? Because it's frustrating. They're not happening. And this came up so strong in my spirit to release the past. In fact, I think right now we should just pray. You know, the Bible says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. See, God can't do a new thing in your life until you let go of the old thing. I want all of you to just bow your head real quick, and let's just seal the deal. Let's not give the devil any more power in our lives. I want you to think of who that is right now that you need to forgive. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we've heard your word tonight, and I believe it's dropped down into our spirits to produce healing from every wound and every memory of our past. Lord, we choose by faith to release all unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, hurt feelings, and all sin from our lives once and for all. Lord, we declare September 2nd is our day of freedom from the past. We release it never to be rehearsed, relived, or remembered in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you receive it? And you know what? Just real quick, I want to say, every time a memory pops up in your head, just say with your mouth, I choose by faith to forgive in Jesus' name. I choose by faith to forgive in Jesus' name. Just say that over and over. And trust me, the devil's going to get so tormented by your words, he'll stop bringing up those memories. Okay, you ready for the last point? Okay, the E stands for elevate your faith with extreme action. Elevate your faith with extreme action. In other words, do something drastic. 
John Maxwell says, put some stake in the game. Ed Milet says, shock your system. What I mean by this is when you do something out of the ordinary, your commitment level goes way up. When you do something you've never done before, it's just not like you, it's out of the ordinary, you get more committed than ever. You get that burning desire to achieve your dream. In fact, when you study the Bible closely, the majority of the people who had major breakthroughs and got their miracle, they did something out of the ordinary, something drastic. Like you think about blind Bartimaeus. He's standing on the side of the road. All he ever did was just beg people for food, beg for money, all of a sudden, one day, he hears that Jesus is walking by. He can't even see him. Hears that he's walking by, and something just came over him, an extreme action. And he started shouting, Jesus, have mercy on me. And people told him, shut up. Like, who are you? Be quiet. And he just shouted even louder, Jesus, have mercy on me. And it got the attention of Jesus, and he healed him. But that was extreme, wasn't it? You think about the people of Jericho. You know how they were circling the walls? When you really think about them circling, like imagine circling the Toyota Music Factory <laughs> six times, and people are watching you, they're making fun of you, they're laughing at you, they're saying, this is stupid, nothing's working, but they just kept marching. That was extreme action, wasn't it? And then on the seventh lap, they begin to shout praises to God before anything happens. So they still look even more ridiculous. They're jumping and shouting. That's like all of us going, let's go try it. And all of us women are out there circling, right? <laughs> I mean, think of all the people in Dallas that would be laughing and making fun of the icing conference, these crazy women and pink feathers, and we're shouting. And <laughs> but that was extreme action. And on the seventh lap, the walls came down, right? In fact, I want to tell you one final story real quick. And this was about me and Rodney when we um, were getting ready to build our first house. We had been married for five years, and I was four months pregnant with Cassidy. And we wanted to get in this house so bad. So we met with the builder. We saw the house we wanted. And he, he ran the numbers for us, and we told him what we could afford as a monthly payment. And so, you know, he, he ran the numbers. And he, um, he said, okay, in order to get the house payments down to what you can afford, you're going to have to put $48,000 down on this house. $48,000. Hey, we'd been married for five years. I want you to put this in perspective. We'd been married for five years. We lived paycheck to paycheck. And the most money we ever had in our savings account was $1,000. That's what we had at that moment, $1,000. So we're sitting in this office with the builder. And he said, so if you want to build a house, you're going to have to put down $48,000. Can you do that? And I said, yeah. Yeah. And then I looked at Rodney and the builder goes, you're telling me six months from now, when the house is complete, you will have 48000 secured in your savings account, your bank account. And Rodney and I both looked at each other and said, uh-huh. <laughs> and he said, okay, well, you sign the papers right here and we'll start building the house. So we literally signed the papers on August 30th saying we will have $48,000. We got in the car and we both looked at each other and said, what the heck did we just do? <laughs> but at the same time, our faith level was so strong. We were like, Lord, we do not have a clue how in the world we're going to do this. But we did everything that I just shared with you tonight. Decide to trust God timing. Lord, I didn't have just a desire to get in that house. I had a burning desire to get in before the baby was born. I wanted my house so bad. But I was going to have to decide to trust God's timing. Somehow he's going to enable us to do this in six months' time. Encourage ourselves. We were listening to the word of God every time we got in the car, every time we were, you know, in the kitchen. See your dream in clear detail. I actually printed a picture of the house plans, and I wrote $48,000. And I wrote increments, 48, 47, 46, 45, all the way down to 1,000. And I put this on the refrigerator so we saw it every day because I didn't have dream books back then and vision boards. I put one of these on my desk at the office, so I was looking at it all day long. Well, then we did the next thing, instantly believe you receive when you pray. We believed on August 30th when we signed those papers, our breakthrough happened. We didn't know how, but we believed the moment we signed those papers, just like Dodie Osteen on December 11th, 1981, somehow our breakthrough came. Release the past. The Lord actually dealt with me 
about releasing all unforgiveness in my heart towards other people and towards myself. And then the E, elevate your faith with extreme action. So my parents have taught me, when you're experiencing your greatest need, you should always sow your greatest seed. If you're experiencing your greatest needs, sow your greatest seed. Now, Rodney was just now learning this. I grew up in this household of faith, right? Rodney was just learning this. So I told Rodney, I said, my parents have ingrained this in me. If you don't have what you need, you're never without the seed that will produce it. So I said, Rodney, that $1,000 that's in our savings account, it doesn't even come close to meeting our need. So let's turn it into seed. And he said, okay. He's never had a problem with this, which I've been so grateful for. We took that $1,000 out of our savings, which was all we had, and we sewed it into a ministry by faith. It, I mean, it was just the biggest thing we had ever done because it was the best we had. And we said, Lord, we're giving you our best. We're giving you all we have. And we're trusting somehow, some way, you are going to give us God-inspired ideas to make $48,000 in six months. And can I tell you, it's exactly what John Maxwell and Ed Milet say, the moment you do something extreme, your commitment level goes way up. All of a sudden, we begin looking for God-inspired ideas to make money. In fact, it was amazing. You know, the Bible says faith without action is dead. We didn't just sit around and just believe, God, someone's going to walk up and hand us $48,000. No, we put legs to our faith. We started looking for opportunities. Rodney actually went to a, a garage sale, and he found a pinball machine for $75. He put a little ad in the paper and sold it for $150. We were like, what? So he bought two more pinball machines, sold them for $300. We were like, cha-ching. We said, I said, Rodney, we're loaded, you know? <laughs> But we were just like, oh my gosh, okay, there's, there's 500 bucks, there's 600 bucks. Like it was just adding up. Um, I taught French to little kids after school and their parents would pay me. You know, I was a ghostwriter. So I reached out to some people who were wanting to write a book and I said, I could write your book for you. One man paid me $1,500. So I marked through another thousand and then another 500. Little things, Rodney and I would work all day at the office. And when we would get home, he would go outside with a little paint can, a paintbrush, and some stencil. And he would walk door to door and ask people, would you like for me to paint your address numbers on the curb for five bucks? And people would say, sure, yeah. He'd come home with 25 bucks, 50 bucks, sometimes 100 bucks, and he was exhausted. But I would be like, oh my gosh, we're close to another thousand, and we'd mark through. I went to Dallas and bought some cheap jewelry and then I put, laid it all on my dining room table and I upped the price. And I told all my coworkers and my friends, y'all should come to my house and buy some jewelry. They came and bought all this jewelry and I would mark through another one. And my sister would make fun of me. She said that I had a coat and I would open it up and there was all these watches. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. She says, yes, it was. I had a burning desire, okay, <laughs> to see my dream fulfilled. Are y'all ready for this? Five months later, we met with the bank. The house was ready. We met with the bank. It was time to, you know, talk about the money, what's in our account. We had raised $38,600 in five months' time. Isn't that amazing? Now, put that in perspective. We had been married for five years and saved $1,000. And in five months, we raised $38,600. And not one single person handed us money. This was all work. And we met with the builder, we're meeting with the bank, and he wanted to net, well, he, he ran the numbers, and he said, before we look at your account and talk about all this, he said, I just wanted you to know that the house has come under budget, you now need $38,000. <laughs> true story, honest to God, true story. Do you know what that means? We had more than enough. We had $38,600. On January 30th, we moved in our house. Two weeks later, on February 15th, I gave birth to Cassidy. Isn't that amazing what a burning desire can do? So every time I've ever had a need in my life, the Lord has talked to me about seed. If you're experiencing your greatest need, sow your greatest seed. So I want you to think about the dreams that you need to get back. And I don't want you to have a hope for it. I don't want you to wish for it. I want this weekend to get a burning desire back. 
to see every dream you've ever asked the Lord for. Those God-inspired dreams, I want you to get them back. Well, this is our last week to offer this special package we put together to help you not give up on your dreams, your prayers, and what to do while you're waiting. And it's 50% off. It includes the Passion Bible, and if you don't have this translation, it will become your new favorite. Plus five messages from me. One of our most popular ones is the seven indicators you have a dream from God. Now, I literally stole this message straight from my dad's notes, and I added a little Terry to it, but this will be your checklist to help you stay focused while you're waiting. Now, this is normally $80, but this is our last week to offer it for only $39. It's easy to order. Just call the number on the screen or go online at terry.com and we will ship it right to you. And I'm cheering you on to live your dream. God has placed dreams and desires in your heart that are unique to you. And they are important indicators of the destiny He has for you. But how do you get from where you are now to living out those dreams that are in your heart? To help you today, Terry has put together a special offer that will build your faith to live out your God-given purpose and calling. In this new Desire Package, you'll receive a flash drive with five of Terry's audio messages. You'll discover how to take a leap of faith, grow in your identity in Christ, increase your desire to achieve big dreams, and overcome setbacks so you can step into your destiny. Plus, you'll also receive a copy of the Passion Translation Bible. Terry would like to send you this power-packed special offer valued at $80 for just $39. Take action now. Head over to terry.com or call the number on your screen to request this Desire Package for 50% off. Get ready for the desires in your heart to become your reality. It's time to take the limits off God and step into your destiny. Join us for the Icing Women's Event Live Experience in Dallas, Texas. This is your time to grow in your relationship with God. Get the biblical tools you need to live your dreams. Be set free from limitations and make 2024 your record-breaking year. Join Terry Savelle Foy along with anointed guest speakers on August 30th through the 31st for an unforgettable weekend that will inspire and motivate you to live out your God-given purpose. Go to terry.com to register for Icing Women's Event today. We can't wait to see you at Icing 2024, the premier women's conference for faith-filled dream achievers.